Greetings to you from Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Plainview, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Phil Augustine, uh, worshiping, uh, leading you in worship of the service of the word uh, here for the day of Pentecost, uh, the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit, uh, which actually is a, an Old Testament uh, prophecy and an Old Testament feast that all of God's people were to, uh, to observe in terms of bringing the first fruits of the harvest uh, to Jerusalem. And that's why there's so many varied peoples that we'll hear in our scripture readings today that were present in Jerusalem some 50 days after the Passover, 50 days after uh, the death uh, of Jesus. So uh, we are, are blessed this day by the coming of the Holy Spirit and his work that continues among us today especially in light of so many troubles and trials uh, that have been in the news this week. We start with our uh, opening hymn, our hymn basically of the day, hymn number 498, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. We sing the first two stanzas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins. Unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading appointed for this day of Pentecost is from the book of Numbers, the 11th chapter. Uh, here we have one example of the Holy Spirit being alive and well in God's people, uh, not only in terms of bringing people to faith, which is always the Holy Spirit's job, but also in enabling uh, prophecy and special gifts uh, of the Spirit when God's people need them most. Uh, Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the son of the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is the account of the Pentecost from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. The fulfillment of Moses' prayer from our Old Testament reading that God's Spirit would be poured out upon all people. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone 
who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear the uh, verse of the day to prepare us for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing now the next three stanzas of Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Text before us today are primarily the gospel reading from John 7, but also allusions to the uh, Pentecost event from Acts chapter 2. And we even pick up maybe the theme of the work of the Holy Spirit through our uh, appointed verse today. We pray, come Holy Spirit and kindle in the hearts of the faithful and bestow upon them the fire of your love. The triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we gather to worship and pray to is not a God of chaos and disorder. That he allows such things to exist in our world, in our universe, is part of what theologians call his alien nature. That is, that which is not, uh, tr that which is foreign to his true nature, his nature of love and mercy. Think about the work of the Spirit, the work of God in terms of moving from chaos to order through the six days of creation. 
we hear from Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. You see, as all of matter comes into existence, it is without shape and structure. It is chaotic. Then, as a potter begins with a lump of clay and begins to fashion it and shape it and mold it into a beautiful work of art or useful art of, or piece of pottery, God begins to provide shape and structure to his creation. Day by day, things come together to form the universe as we now know it, as we continue to know more and more about each and every day. God brings order out of chaos. Did you notice the Holy Trinity at work? For in the creed, we confess God the Father as maker of, heaven, of, maker of the heavens and the earth, Yet it is also the Holy Spirit that we find is circulating over the chaotic waters of the earth to participate with the Father and the Son in the creation of all that is, the creation of light, the shaping of land and plants and animals and the sun, moon, and stars, and finally, to breathe life into man. God and man in perfect union, no longer in chaos, but perfect order. Until sin enters the world, enters the universe through the one man's disobedience. Ever since then, chaos has ensued. Instead of delighting in the presence of God and in the Word of God, where the Holy Spirit is alive and active, man instead resists the Holy Spirit. Yet the Spirit who once hovered over chaotic waters to bring peace and order continues to seek out chaotic hearts and to breathe life into chaotic, cold, broken hearts in order to know God and especially to know Jesus the Savior from sin and all the chaos that sin brings. This past week has left us shocked and saddened, angered and appalled. A new name has displaced the name of the coronavirus in the news, the name of George Floyd black man pinned down by a white police officer last Monday, inflicting him with relentless pain and cutting off critical air and blood supply to him. As a result of that mistreatment, George Floyd died. If all of the coronavirus chaos wasn't enough, now we've got even more. The chaos of street justice, as one person called it, going on not only in the Twin Cities, but all over the country. Even in Rochester, there were protests Friday night. Protests up in the cities that degraded into riots, mass destruction and looting, buildings burned, people harmed. We need no further evidence of mankind's wayward, unholy spirit and the fruits of the flesh as we have seen the past week. St. Paul's letter to the Galatians says it clearly regarding man's unholy spirit and the works of the flesh. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, 
drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. And St. Paul says, I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If there's ever a time for the Holy Spirit to make his appearance, it's in these troubling times. For many of us know people who live or work in those areas that have been disrupted by the chaos that has ensued following this tragedy. Yes, there have been peaceful protests that are a good and proper expression of our country's freedoms, but oh, there have been unfortunately riots, property damage, and threats put on, that have put us on edge, fearing for our lives, the lives that we know are in or near harm's way. And, of course, we've still got the fear of the knowns and the unknowns of the coronavirus. Much of summer's usual delights of fairs and festivals and trips and reunions have been canceled also in the last week or two. Oh, we got a glimmer of hope here in Minnesota as our worship gatherings have been permitted to resume again at limited capacity and if we have the proper plans and procedures in place. And know that we at Emmanuel are working on those things. But the reality is our sinful flesh is tired. Tired of the news, tired of precautions, Try, tired of trying to decide what's safe or best or doable, tired of being tired because of all this chaos. If there ever was a time we need the Holy Spirit, surely this is the day, this is the time. If we ever needed a 21st century Pentecost, this is the day for a new spirit to be kindled in our hearts to kindle God's love in us. And the Holy Spirit is delighted to do so. Hear the words of Jesus from John chapter 7. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. For all the fear, for all the lawlessness, all the riots, all the hatred, all the racism, all the sickness and death and despair, for all the chaos, the answer is found in Jesus. For he comes to quench our thirsty souls, our thirsty, tired souls. And the work of the Holy Spirit is simply to point you to Jesus, point you to his cross where he atones for all your fears, all your sins, all your despair. The Spirit points you to Jesus to make him known to you even as you are already known and loved by God the Father. The Father who sent his only begotten Son to redeem you and the whole world from sin and death and chaos. Jesus promised his disciples a special portion of that Holy Spirit to help them to become strong and courageous in the face of their own chaos that they would face within persecution and trials and arrests and even death for their faith in him. And 50 days after his death on the cross, on the Feast of Pentecost, the Spirit was given. The feast required faithful 
Jewish men to come to Jerusalem to offer the sacrifices uh, for this Old Testament feast at the temple, a first fruits harvest of the barley crop. And so, as the Acts 2 reading says of that day, there were people from all over the world gathered in Jerusalem. On that feast day, God fulfilled his promise to the disciples, and God reversed, in a way, his chastisement that he once had to levy upon his people when they tried to build a tower up to heaven. And God said, let their languages now be confused and cause some chaos to happen. Read about that in Genesis chapter 11 in the Tower of Babel. But now on that New Testament Pentecost coming, now the disciples who were simple men, remember mostly fishermen, with no formal training and formal languages, could now proclaim the great and mighty deeds of God. The great and mighty deeds of Jesus, the Christ who was crucified and now risen from the dead. From those disciples would flow rivers of living water. Their preaching and teaching of Jesus would wash upon thirsty souls who needed to know that God was still with them, that God would protect them, that he would forgive them for giving in to the chaos that the religious leaders had caused some 50 days earlier that brought about the crucifixion of the Son of God. They needed to know that they could be forgiven for giving into that temptation and all temptations in this crazy, chaotic world. That is no better now than when Jesus walked on it. And thanks be to God that living water now flows to you, too. That's the promise and power of Pentecost that is happening right now to you. It began in your baptism when the flood of the Lord's love and mercy washed all your sins away and continues to do so as you come before the Lord with a repentant heart, confessing your sins, your shortcomings, your giving into temptation for getting caught up in the chaos of the world. And you remember God's forgiveness won for you through the blood of Jesus. The living waters of Jesus cover and drown your fears and frustrations and bring about the positive fruits of faith. Man's unholy spirit becomes drowned in those baptismal waters. Man's unholy spirit that brings the chaos of sin. But as St. Paul writes, the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Lord knows we need more self-control these days. Against such things there is no law, St. Paul writes, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Good words. Let us keep in step with the Spirit, the Spirit that has been sealed upon us in our baptism, that a spirit that empowers us to prophesy, to share God's Word, God's promises to our children and grandchildren, to within our school, within our community, through this video ministry, through so many means. Parents, I would urge you to Watch the news with your kids, and when you see the chaos of the world, remind them that God is here to take that chaos away. And yeah, sometimes God uses some strange means to do that, and that's why we need to be people of faith. 
That's why we need to be in the Word so that that Holy Spirit can strengthen us to live out our days. Being cautious, but not fearful. Being loving and kind and merciful and not giving in to the ways of the flesh. Keeping in step with the Spirit helps the Holy Spirit to work faith in our hearts to know nothing for our salvation other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified and risen. Helps us see that we can be better than what we are seeing on television. To help you know that you can be better than that ugly sinner that you see in the mirror. For that sinner fails time and time again. But the Holy Spirit continues to lift up, to enliven and succeed. The sinner hates and robs and hurts and discriminates. But the Holy Spirit shows us the wounds of Jesus and helps us believe that by those wounds we are healed. We are forgiven. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. And may we also pray, touch the hearts of the wicked, that they might turn and live in the living waters of Jesus and kindle in us all the fire of your love, a love for God and a love for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in singing the offertory. Almighty God, who have blessed us in love with the Savior whom the nations cry and in whom forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given, grant to us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, whom you have promised, that we and all who call upon his name shall be saved. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercy and to give ourselves fully to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have promised the thirsty will drink, and from the empty will flow forth rivers of living water. Help us to show forth holy lives with the fruits of the Spirit, and to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way, but walks in the path of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to make one people from the many. Take from us all pride, prejudice, and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel by our shame, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. Lord, we have been impacted in our state by acts of prejudice and violence in the past week. We pray that people would put aside hate and anger and let the spirit of comfort and peace calm their hearts and lead them to repentance reconciliation and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end, we pray, to the pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. 
Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn. Answer your people, O Lord, and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, our time is in your hands. Look with favor on those who celebrate birthdays this week. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with your abiding love all their days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, graciously abide with husbands and wives, especially all who will celebrate their wedding anniversaries in the month of June. By your grace, strengthen them in love for you and for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who lives to call to himself all who will be saved. You know what we need and those things we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We join in the final two stanzas of Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. <laughs> 